Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's news. Starting off with wars and rumors of wars, talk is now escalating among investors and political analysts saying that World War III may be an inevitable result of global economics and financial cycles. Tension in Syria is nearing the limit and members of the U.S.-led alliance must stand shoulder to shoulder to confront simultaneous threats from Russia and the Islamic State. Some are saying that a piecemeal World War III has actually already begun. U.S. airstrikes on Thursday, September 18th, struck an IS training camp southeast of Mosul, the group's stronghold in Iraq. Another strike southeast of Baghdad damaged an IS ammunition stockpile, and France carried out its first airstrikes against the IS in Iraq on Friday morning. Meanwhile, the IS captured 16 predominantly Kurdish villages in northern Syria over a 24-hour period on Friday, September 19th, using artillery and tanks along the Syria-Turkey border. The Islamic State has drawn growing attention for spewing brutal propaganda across social media messages meant both to terrify and recruit Westerners. The group has a well-funded, well-organized social media and video production effort. Its videos are slickly produced with high production values. I've reported previously about how porous the Mexican-American border is. 466,000 people have been caught illegally crossing the U.S. border over the last 12 months with 157,000 getting away, according to Homeland Security. Those captured came from 143 different countries, including Syria, Iraq, and Iran. The IS is now working in Juarez, Mexico, and planning to attack the United States with car bombs and other vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices, and the Obama administration steadfastly denies that Islamic terrorists are operating in Juarez, even as facts continue to unfold, proving otherwise. Last week, American and Canadian systems picked up and tracked Russian Bear H bombers flying a line across the northern Atlantic Ocean near Iceland, Greenland, and Canada's northeast, conducting practice runs to a predetermined launch box, that is, an optimum point for firing nuclear-armed cruise missiles at U.S. targets. These flights amount to nuclear saber-rattling by Moscow over escalating tensions surrounding the Ukraine. It seems Russia now considers the United States and the NATO alliance as its enemies. Joel chapter 2 verse 30 And I will show signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire, and columns of smoke. The number of volcanoes that are erupting continues to rise, and scientists cannot explain why this is happening. There are 34 volcanoes erupting around the globe right now, threatening catastrophic winters, crop failures, and widespread famines, all this while we are approaching the second of four blood moons and a full solar eclipse on the horizon. Turning to America, the U.S. government approved a $1 trillion funding bill last week, giving Obama the green light to strike the I.S. in Syria. Not Iraq, mind you. Syria. Note, this bill emphasizes its specific intention to train Syrian rebel fighters, 
Now, the interesting thing about that is the IS has reportedly been negotiating a deal with the Syrian rebel fighters. And what that means is that Obama is actually funding and arming the Islamic State. Not too very surprising when you consider that the U.S. helped create the IS in the first place. Now, put that together with the fact that on Monday, September 15th, at a meeting in Paris, France, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry made it clear that the strategy of the U.S. is to promote real Islam. What on earth is that supposed to mean? The point they, Obama and Kerry, are trying to make with this bizarre statement is that first, the IS is not Islamic, and second, it is not a state. In other words, they're trying to get across the idea that real Islam is not what people are saying or thinking it is, that the IS is not interested in promoting the religion of Islam because the religion has nothing to do with being a state. Is Obama attempting to actually promote the religion of Islam? And then they say, quote, we are not at war with the Islamic State. Are they insane? I mean, how can they ignore the constant IS cry of caliphate? Quote, a caliphate is an Islamic state led by a supreme religious and political leader known as a caliph, that is, a successor to Muhammad. Note, the U.S. is offering open arms to Iran at the upcoming U.N. General Assembly. High-level meetings started yesterday, Monday, September 22nd, and general debates will be held September 24th through the 30th. Newsflash. This just came in, my friends, while I was in the middle of editing this video. The United States has begun striking targets of the Islamic State in Syria without authorization from the government of Bashar Assad in Damascus, but in conjunction with, quote, conjunction forces, close quote, the Pentagon said on Monday night, quote, U.S. military and partner nation forces are undertaking military action against the Islamic State. Of course, they refer to it as ISIL, terrorists, in Syria, using a mix of fighter, bomber, and Tomahawk land attack missiles. Given that these operations are ongoing, we are not in a position to provide additional details at this time. Close quote. I'll be watching this, of course, and we'll report more on it next week. But I'm letting you know as it comes in, before I release this video. Now, back to the news. Turning to the Islamic State. Here, my friends, is how the Islamic State works. The IS in Iraq and Syria has oil revenues, arms, organization, controls vast stretches of Syria and Iraq, and aspires to statehood. It has a detailed structure that encompasses many functions and jurisdictions, and many of its leaders are former officers from Saddam Hussein's long disbanded army who augmented their military training with terrorist techniques during years of fighting American troops. Look at this chart. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the self-proclaimed caliph of the Islamic State, has two deputies. One is responsible for Syria and the other is responsible for Iraq. Leadership Council. Mr. Baghdadi relies on a number of, of advisors with direct access to him. Members of this council help handle religious differences order executions, and ensure that policies conform to the IS doctrine. The cabinet managers oversee departments like finance, security, media, 
prisoners and recruitment. Local leaders. At least a dozen deputies across Iraq and Syria report to the deputy of each country. Many of these officials were military officers during Saddam Hussein's rule. Now look at this chart showing the territory. The IS has rapidly expanded its control over Iraq and Syria by seizing towns and cities near major supply routes, critical infrastructure, and border crossings. Over the summer, the group pressed deeper into Syria, regaining some territory it had lost to other rebel groups and capturing several gov government military bases. It is still trying to consolidate its control along the border between Iraq and Syria. ISIS fighters experienced some setbacks in Iraq, where American airstrikes helped Iraqi and Kurdish forces reclaim the Mosul Dam and the Turkmen city of Amirli. Financing. Look at this chart. You see oil fields in purple. And in red, you can see oil fields that are owned by the IS. Millions of dollars in oil revenue have made the IS one of the wealthiest terror groups in history. Experts estimate the value of the output from the dozen or so oil fields and refineries under its control in Iraq and Syria at $1 million to $2 million a day. Governing? When it seizes a city, the IS keeps select services operating while using brute force to impose its vision of a fundamentalist Islamic state. Religious police make sure that shops close during Muslim prayers and that women cover their hair and faces in public. Public spaces are walled off with heavy metal fences topped with the black flags of the IS. People accused of disobeying the law are punished by public executions or amputations. At the same time, the IS keeps markets, bakeries, and gas stations functioning. This chart shows you the origins of the IS's foreign recruits. The largest blocks of foreign fighters come from nearby Muslim countries like Tunisia and Saudi Arabia. Smaller contingents come from countries as far away as Belgium, China, Russia, and the United States. Weapons? The IS has stolen hundreds of millions of dollars worth of weapons and equipment from Iraqi and Syrian military installations. It has also intercepted supplies and route to Syrian rebel groups from foreign governments. Many small arms and rockets used by the IS appear to have been provided by Saudi Arabia and the United States, like M16 and M4 rifles stamped property of U.S. government, or the M79 anti-tank rockets from the former Yugoslavia that were identical to M79 rockets provided by Saudi Arabia to rebels in Syria. U.S. Senator Rand Paul was quoted this week saying, We gave 600 tons of weapons to the Syrian rebels in 2013 alone. Numerous news sites are reporting rumors saying that the CIA and the IS are united in purpose and intent. And new recruits are flocking to the IS since Obama gave his speech last week. The fact is, U.S. airstrikes will only embolden support for the IS. 162 people attended two separate training camps set up by the IS in Aleppo province in the last week alone and most of them are former fighters with the Syrian Al-Qaeda affiliate the Nusra Front, which has been going up against ISIS in a battle for regional supremacy. Last week, I reported that Western intelligence agencies have pitched the number of ISIS fighters at around 30,000 in both Syria and Iraq combined. However, 
The fact is that ISIS now has more than 50,000 fighters, and that does not count what they have in Iraq. That is the number they have in Syria alone. As I just noted, any U.S. airstrikes will only serve to fire up anti-Western resentment and increase support for the Islamic State, but especially among Syrians. The Islamic State brings law and order to Syria. They go after criminals and bandits and they clean up towns. Under the rebels, Syrians saw chaos and lawlessness. Some of Aleppo's industrialists and factory owners have opted to move their machinery from the Sheikh Najjar industrial zone into IS territory in Al-Bab because they know it will be safe from looting there. And the IS also provides many services, mostly free of charge. They fix roads and power lines, give out food to the needy, they have traffic police and free religious schools. The truth is, my friends, the war against ISIS will be won and lost on the ground through hearts and minds, not through missiles and bombs. Another satanic front. The satanic temple of New York City has been granted permission to pass out its literature to students in public schools in the Orlando, Florida area, including copies of the Satanic Children's Big Book of Activities. After district officials declined to prohibit distribution of religious materials, Meanwhile, augmenting Satan's work there, the school district recently banned chaplains from high school football games. <laughs> Further, New York City Satanists traveled all the way to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, to conduct a Satanic Black Mass at the Civic Center Music Hall just last Sunday, September 21st, to a sold-out crowd. And that's the news for this week, my friends. Be safe, and until next week, Abba willing, Shalom. And I consume enough is time alone with you Underneath a naked moon Sharing confidential moods And making chatter Mockingbird nocturnal sings Notations of eternal things Entering the quantum breeze Flying not for want of wings He lights his gaze on you and me Simply because we matter